everyone, welcome back for another segment of Michigan Conservative Roundtable. Mac is to my left, our newly acquired Kim is to my right, and uh, we're going to talk today about uh, something that uh, some, I, I, have, I have a little history with on this topic. Uh, uh, it, it solidified me as a conservative back in my younger years, back in the early 1990s. Uh, last year I did a solo on how I became a conservative or, or what solidified me as a conservative. Uh, just recently a movie has been released. This movie only got a 33% rating with Rotten Tomatoes, yet the viewing audience gave it 99%. Wow. 99% the viewing audience, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 33. Uh, it's about Clarence Thomas and it's titled Created Equal, Clarence Thomas, in his own words. It's like an interview type of narration where uh, Thomas, Clarence Thomas does a whole lot of speaking. And, uh, and, and as I've already mentioned, it, it was something that when I, when I think back to his whole nomination, that, that whole nomination fiasco of his, I remember thinking, holy cow, if they're going to do this to him, what are they going to do to little old me? And that's what woke me up. Okay, I mean, they 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 tarred and feathered that guy in, in front of the entire nation, uh, and what reminded me was when Joe Biden, if you recall, oh, Joe yeah. Biden said, "Hey, I'm going to run for president," and I thought, "Wait a minute, wait a minute," and then I did a little bit of research. I said, "Sure enough, he was the Senate Judiciary Chairman at the time of Clarence Thomas's nomination hearing, and so he oversaw all that mess, and so uh, you know." I did then, and I'll do it again. Thank Joe Biden for uh, reminding me of uh, uh, why I'm a conservative. Oh, hey, and Joe, remember, it ain't even a gun issue, okay? So uh, uh, I have some thoughts as to really how he ended up being nominated on the court. You know, and, and this is where I'm interested in you guys' thoughts. I think, I think Bush 41 picked him because he was black first and then conservative second. You know, I mean, of course... You could even think of it as divine providence that, that he, he was uh, put on the court, uh, even under those types of circumstances. But, uh, uh, you know, he, I, I, just the whole idea of, you know, he exposed the left because he wasn't the right black guy. Right. You know, so yeah. y'all's thoughts so far? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I don't have any right now. Okay. Well... You know, I'm I'm interested in seeing this movie because if you you know you know the question where who would you like to sit down and have lunch with uh -huh. or talk to, Clarence Thomas would be someone on my list. Well, and I think that's how they kind of did this as yeah. as a one on one. They were inter I've yet to see this movie, but from what I've read, it's kind of a one on one interview. And as he speaks, it it touches on 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 his life's events and. Uh, prior to and leading up to when he got on the uh, Supreme Court, uh, kind of kind of a sit down talk type of uh, documentary, is I think how they they're presenting it. Uh, in the movie, it uh, showed two pictures in his office. First was a drawing of Frederick Douglass, and a picture of his grandfather Myers Anderson, and he credits his grandfather as. Uh, uh, being a very influential uh, uh, person to him as, as he matured and basically got it together politically. Uh, because of what he witnessed with the whole forced uh, busing uh, issue back then, yeah. uh, he, he, uh, he determined that uh, it was counterproductive. Given what he witnessed, he felt busing was counterproductive. He mentioned, you know, that's mentioned. Uh, he worked in the Missouri Attorney General's office where he had... Uh, he, he uh, observed black-on-black -black crime quite a bit from, from the way it's reported. And uh, worked in the private sector, and he felt he was there because of affirmative action, and he uh, kind of felt maybe he was looked down upon because of it. Oh, I don't doubt he was. You know, uh, he, he if, if you know anything about the Supreme Court, uh, he's one of the uh, least talkative judges whenever they whenever a case is presented to the Supreme Court he says uh, that's an intentional uh, thing he does he practices he feels as a judge he's there to listen not to necessarily become an advocate of one side or the other 
So he makes a point of listening. Well, we have our advocates on the court for sure. Well, he makes it very clear he's not an advocate. Okay. Uh, and he is, uh, he's written more than 650 legal opinions, and he is currently the longest serving justice on the court. Oh, I, didn't know. I guess right. I should have known that. Any, any other thoughts so far? No, I'm good. All right. So, February is Black History Month. And I think that's in part uh, going to the timing of the release of this movie. Also, I, I think uh, uh, part of the reason uh, it, this uh, movie was produced was that there's a sense that the liberals are trying to erase history, and especially in regards to Clarence Thomas's yeah, history. Right. Uh, and so that's, that's why the movie, that's why the title of the movie. Uh, and, and that's why it was so important that it be in his words. You know, not not someone who talked to someone who talked to Judge Clarence Thomas and said, well, he said that he said... And God knows how that would you know, come out. Yeah, so, uh, no, it, they, wanted, they wanted this pretty much in his words. I happened to be watching a PragerU video last week, and they mentioned, uh, they were talking about the Supreme Court, and they uh, mentioned that if you ask around and ask people, maybe we should do this, or maybe the people in the audience can tell us, who was the first uh, woman Supreme Court justice? Well, people are answering Ruth Bader Ginsburg, when in fact it was Sandra Day O'Connor, quite That's a bit right, earlier. Yeah. And of course we know that because we're, <coughs> Man, we're we lived through it, but we're old enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's a couple pieces of information which I'm sure you'll find interesting, if not messed up. Uh, the National Museum of African American History and Culture, located in Washington, D.C., uh, at its opening in 2016. I don't know if this has been corrected and, and it's by the sounds of the article, I don't think it has been. But when it opened in 2016, it had no exhibit of Judge Clarence Thomas. Yeah, I, I do remember that happening. Oh, yeah. Okay, well I got, I got something even worse. I got something even worse to hit you with. The Smithsonian. The, uh, Which we pay for. The revered Smithsonian. They gave space for exhibition to the Black Panthers, Hip Hop, and Black Lives Matters groups, but not to Clarence Thomas. That's disgusting. Well, what, a, what, a, what an insult. Well, what, uh, what a, here's what an the thing, the, the Black Panthers, Hip Hop, and Black Lives Matter, to a lesser degree, a great lesser degree, they are part of American history, but it's the omission that's that's dangerous and disgusting. And by the way, I got that from an article written by Ken Blackwell. Uh, Ken Blackwell wrote an article, and it appeared in the USA Today. I, and I'll be honest, I was shocked. But Ken Blackwell uh, wrote an article, and this is where I got the bulk of my information on this topic here. Uh, he, he's a black Republican out of Ohio. He used to be the mayor of Cincinnati. And... Uh, and uh, I guess per Ken Blackwell, I have to assume the Smithsonian, in fact, uh, did this injustice. Uh, he would he would also later write in this article, they finally did give in partially to the public outcries, uh, and they kind of put up an, uh, an ex exhibit which included uh, Clarence Thomas and uh, was a Thorogood Marshall. Yeah. All right. Uh, they kind of combined the two, you know, in the exhibit, right. you know. Uh, from the way he made it sound. Uh, two very different men coming from two very different ideologies, too. Yeah, exactly. Also, Ken Blackwell uh, uh, mentions that uh, in the 60s and 70s, Clarence Thomas uh, was a, a little involved. It doesn't sound like he, he, he... There's not much detail here, but it sounds like he, he uh, dabbled in it perhaps a little bit where he uh, was involved in some radicalism. Uh, and then at some point he uh, went to church and the Holy Spirit touched his heart and he asked God to, and I want to get this right, I'd like to get this right. Uh, what did he say here? He asked God to take the anger out of his heart. Okay, uh, and from that point on he... Uh, we could all do that. Yeah. Uh, sure. Well, you know what, taking the anger out of your heart, uh, you know, that, that involves forgiveness. You know, so uh, anyways, uh, Clarence Thomas, in his words, acknowledges that uh, by uh, the liberal standards, he's the wrong black guy. And uh, any final thoughts, y'all? 
I plan on seeing the movie. Uh, hopefully it'll be everything I think it is. Yeah. All right. Okay. And I'm going to see the movie too, for All sure. All right. <laughs> All right. So, we encourage everyone to see the movie. And with that, we'll close with be safe, watch your six, and do not tread on me. Thank <laughs> you.